What is up, guys? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 280. And as always, our podcast is brought to you by Amazon. If you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon and happen to purchase something that gives a little kickback and keeps the uh, podcast going here with me is my co-host, Ryan. What's going on? Just making some last minute mic adjustments. It was like bugging me in my yeah. frame here. I'm kind of like just... I still I feel, like I, I feel like I'm like too zoomed out, but if I hey, you're having a couple oh, of camera but, issues. Oh, that was, oh yep. I think that's, that's a little bit better. But um Yeah. But yeah, okay. talking about okay, so talking about Amazon. Okay. They're like typically their search has is like really good. You know, you search for something, you find it. But mm-hmm. recently they've been like putting stuff in my search results that I've like looked at previously, but that has nothing to do with my search results. It's kind of crappy. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, Just and they the do that too. That I asked for. Yeah. So, and recently, so if you go to like uh, amazon.com uh, back or forward slash backslash deals, like mm-hmm. that's all their deals that are going on. And then there's like, they're set into sections like, uh, you know, photography, electronics, computers. And I go in the computers one and then it, it has like two or three items that have nothing to do with computers, like nothing at all, like a refrigerator, like, like not even like even worse than that, like workout equipment is in with like, you know, because maybe I looked at it and it's yeah. in there. I don't, I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. So you think they're doing it on purpose and it's not just yes. like, it's hundred percent sure on purpose. Yeah. hundred yeah. yeah. percent on purpose. So the evils of Amazon continue. Oh, Hey, remember, uh, don't, don't forget. We have more than just camera gear. Don't forget yeah. that fridge you just looked at. We've still got it. Yeah. I still, I, you know, as, as bad as some of the Amazon policies have been, I still, I guess Walmart is pretty close as far as their shipping, but you still can't get that like next day or two day like guarantee that Amazon yeah. does. That That's why a lot of people still will use it because it's just so convenient. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you're going to get the product. Um, and they, over the past couple of years, they have got really a lot better at like, you know, they take a picture when they deliver it. So, you know, it's delivered and like all that kind of stuff that like, you know, all, you know, Target, Walmart, all these other places won't, they'll just be like, yeah, it was delivered. I don't, I, you know. Yeah. yeah, we don't so, know where we put it, but yeah, the guy said he delivered it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, convenience, convenience. I still don't get a picture it. every time from them on a delivery. Yeah, same here. I don't know if they like change that or sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Yeah. And recently they've said stuff was delivered and it was not delivered at all. They they have no proof. Of, like, I think like delivery guys just like taking it. Cause you know, the, the delivery people, it's just like Uber. It's the same. Well, not like just like, sure. Uber, but like for some you know, of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the same thing. So it's like, are they just like saying it's delivered? And then it just never, like I've had stuff that just would never show up because I've had stuff that I would order and it said it was delivered, but then it comes like two days later but then I've had stuff where it just doesn't show up ever, which is just weird. I don't know how that happens. So in any case, um, this obviously isn't a podcast about Amazon. We're just going on a little rant there uh, about Amazon. This course is tech podcast. We have a lot of tech to uh, talk to you guys about this week. Some cool products uh, that I had a chance to review and some interesting news stories. Um, If you want to follow along, we do have our full show notes page, which is linked in the description of the video wherever you're watching this um where you can follow along and see everything that we're going to be talking about this week and let's start off was it last week or was it the week before uh i think it was the no it was last week or no it was the week before we talked about that corsair k55 rgb pro xt which was i think was it 59 dollars 
it's full size affordable. Yep. Yeah, full size keyboard, but it wasn't mechanical. Right. Um, right. But it was an affordable full size keyboard. We talked about, you know, the price was pretty good for what you're getting. This week we have a, another very affordable keyboard. This one comes in at $49. Um, and it has mechanical key switches, which is pretty awesome. A bump up, yeah, from the Corsair. Sure. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. So right. if I do, I'll just, yeah, I don't know. But I'm ready. anyways, <laughs> um, is it, I, I guess like, so I guess here in California, like it's not because it's nice all the time. There's not like an allergy season. It could be any time depending on yeah. like what you're allergic but, to, I guess. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, back to the keyboard here. This is from... Gamdius or Gamdius, Gamdius. Uh, this yep. is our Her Hermes M5, and there's two things that really stand out. One, it's the price, forty nine bucks, full size mechanical keyboard. Secondly, is the the colorway that's on the the keyboard itself, as far as the keycaps. Typically, there are a few keyboards, like obviously the one that I use is my daily driver right here, that has a cool keycap set that comes stock. But most of the time, you're either going to get a white keyboard or a black keyboard, right? Yep, uh, when it yep. comes to your keycaps, that's especially gaming keyboards. That's what you're getting. And but then you'll this, maybe get like some WASD that are like different colors or something sometimes. But yeah, yeah, typically so, mono color. Yeah. So on this keyboard, you're getting this light blue and white uh, design, which I think is incredibly attractive. It's going to look awesome on your desk. I'm a big fan of white keyboards in general, but adding the the light blue keys just make it pretty cool. I think. Um, Overall, the design of the keyboard is very minimalistic. As you can see, not much of the keyboard is wasted at all. We have no extra keys or anything like that. Um, you do get four multimedia keys. These, these are actually true keys. Um, they are mechanical switches on here um, for your multimedia. But beyond that, nothing else extra. You do have an aluminum top plate, but the rest of the keyboard is plastic and Picking it up, it is a lot lighter than other mechanical keyboards. I'll, I'll say that. Um, the switches, I don't know who the OEM on the switch is. Um, they just say they're Gamdia switches. Um, this keyboard is available just in blue, which is a uh, clicky switch, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, if you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that I'm a fan of the clicky switches. And these have blues, which are made to mimic a Cherry MX blue. I have to say that I don't think there's any, at least in my opinion, when especially when it comes to blues and greens, um, nobody has made a switch that perfectly mimics the cherry mx switch it's just you can tell the difference um especially if like, if you're like me and you review a lot of keyboards it's yeah you, you just have a lot to compare difference. against and you can tell yeah sure but these are true mechanical switches which we didn't get in that corsair keyboard obviously if you've used a mechanical keyboard and then like a membrane or a dome switch a scissor switch or anything like that you know a mechanical is going to feel 10 times better in this keyboard um definitely does we do have a permanently attached cable. It's definitely one of the cheapest cables that I've ever seen on a gaming keyboard. Um, it's nice that they made it white to match the keyboard, but yep. beyond that, it's rubber, it's cheap. It's And what's really interesting is that most keyboard cables are six feet. This is five feet. Not that it makes a difference, at least in my setup. I, I don't have issues with length, uh, obviously, but yeah, 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 that's kind of one of the I mean, places. It's a very affordable keyboard, so you can't get everything yeah. awesome on it. So I understand. That. Um, the keycaps are ABS, um, but they're the typical uh, stem. So you can put different keycaps on here if you want. But the whole idea behind this keyboard is that it's, you know, it looks great as it is with the two different colors. So you're not really going to want to change that all that much. You do get uh, the height adjustment, which a lot of keyboards in this price range don't have for some reason. They're actually put at a pretty steep angle by default. But here you do get some adjustment as well. Um, and as far as the lighting on the keyboard goes, you don't get RGB. You get what they call ice blue, um, which, as you can see here, it does match pretty well with the keyboard. I, I think that they've done a great job making keycaps 
uh, and you know, just a whole overall design of the keyboard that looks good together. You don't need RGB here. I think it won't, it's not necessarily going to look great. Uh, if you have RGB lighting, uh, on this, I, I think a white would have looked good too, but you just get the ice blue. Um, and like I said, I, I think this is gonna look awesome sitting on your desk. It's, it's a good looking keyboard. Yeah. I like, I like the look of it. Um, I, you know, I obviously wish it had RGB lighting on the keys, but at that price point, I can understand why they don't. Um, but I think that color scheme with the light blue lighting looks really good. Yeah. Like Definitely I said, like I, I, I think that it goes Everything just goes well together for mm -hmm. that price point. I, th I think it's good. Um, now, the problems that I do have with this keyboard is that a couple of things. We'll talk about the lighting. So the lighting, you do have controls on the keyboard for lighting. There is no software with this, um, but the controls on the keyboard are only for lighting. So you can cycle through, I think, five or six different uh, effects. You can also do per key and program it. It's not all that difficult to program, but again, no software. Also, no software for reprogramming the keyboard, and they're calling this a gaming keyboard. Well, if I have a gaming keyboard, I wanna create macros. I wanna you know, be have the ability to reprogram my keyboard. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that on this keyboard at all. Um, secondly, the keycaps, they just feel, it just feels a little bit wobbly to me um, compared to other mechanical keyboards that I have. I don't know if that's the Switch, or the keycaps per se, but it just didn't feel as good. I noticed good. the the uh, stems in the one image you were showing when you were showing the switches themselves. They look similar to. I mean, they've got the kind of the cross for the the standard MX uh, uh, keycaps, but they're like rectangular um, stems there that go down into there. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Maybe it's not just tight enough. And it's um, it's not tolerances to keep it from wobbling. It's not as much like when, when you get into gaming or when you get into typing, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. It's more or less I was missing keystrokes, and that is a big deal. Um, sure. You know, it was it, like I'd be typing. I'd be like, you know, when you first get a keyboard and you get used oh, yeah. to it, you, you miss you miss keystrokes. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's how I felt sometimes. And I'm like, why am I missing this? I've been using this keyboard for like three weeks. You know what I mean? It's like that type of thing. Um, so that is one of the things I didn't like about the keyboard. There is a little bit more give on this keyboard as well, because you do have that aluminum top plate, but it's not the, like, again, this is a the keyboard just felt light to me. Um, you know, but you can't complain at 50 bucks. I think it's a great keyboard, especially if you are one of those people who really like like the custom keyboard look, but you're not spending yeah. hundred, 200, 300. I mean, you, I mean, if you're building your own keyboard, I mean, five, six, $700 on a keyboard, but you want that cool look that looks like, you know, something like maybe he did design it. The only thing I, I, you know, I think that's kind of the crowd that they're going for. It would have been nice to have a detachable USB cable because a lot of times those people want to get a coiled cable made yep. later, you know, um, that would have been nice on here, but for, for 50 bucks, I really can't complain all that much. Um, it does have a down, it's downfalls. So I gave it an eight out of 10. Um, check it out if if you're kind of strapped and you want a true mechanical full size keyboard that looks really cool. Uh, check this one out because, like I said, I I like it. I you know I'm still stuck on this. Like obviously this one, but if I was on a budget, this would definitely be one that I would consider. And again, it's gonna regardless of some of the issues that I had with the switches, it's still gonna feel ten times better than a non mechanical keyboard at this price point, it's just is, it's just how, how Tip. things work, you know? So, so yeah, so go ahead and check that out. I also took a look at some memory um, from PNY's gaming brand, which is Accelerate Gaming. It's their Epic X RGB. Uh, this is the first Accelerate Gaming product that we've looked at, I believe. Um, I don't remember us reviewing anything else from them. Of course, everybody knows Accelerate Gaming from you know, PNY's graphics cards, um, but they're, you know, they make a few other things. They make SSDs and memory. So this is their 16 gigabyte, gigabyte kit that runs at 3,600 megahertz. And I would say the design overall is pretty standard. It doesn't really, like, it doesn't stick out like the, the Thermaltake one did. I mean, if you look at the modules, black PCB, black heat spreader, accelerate logo in the middle, uh, heat spreader at the top, kind of like, I call this like a wing design almost. Cause it, you know, 
Yeah, kind of like, like a wing or boomerang type of is what it reminds you of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they're good looking modules. They just they don't stand out all that much. They have the accelerate logo on the top of the uh, diffuser here. And if we go into like the, the RGB lighting is good. There's five RGB LEDs on each mm. module. Uh, they look good. The modules are compatible with every major motherboard manufacturers, RGB software. PNY does not include any of their own software, which I was kind of bummed out because we test this on like gigabyte motherboards and gigabyte motherboards, like their RGB fusion 2.0, I think is so bad. Um, I'm not a fan of it. it. There's not a whole lot of, uh, customizing That's things. Cool. And like, like their preset effects are very boring. Um, so by default, these will run like a rainbow wave. Um, but if you do have like a better, you know, I think Asrox is really good. And I think that Asus is, uh, RGB software is really good as well, but it would be nice if PNY had their own software. Just if you just wanted to, you know, have a little bit more customization, you could have had it. But overall, I think the lighting looks good. It's again, it's like most kits that have a diffuser. It's not. Is it diffused very well? Cause these pictures look like the LEDs are pretty uh, noticeable. I didn't know if are, it's just pictures or I think it's, if it looks it's, better in person. It's more the pictures. Um, I wish I, I, th I thought I had another one. Um, it's, it's more the pictures. It is decently diffused, um, but there is only five in here. Right. So you don't get as much coverage. So you get the dead spots. Spots in between, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. That is kind of, I would say, standard. There's only a few companies putting more than uh, five in in here so again something something to think about um you can see how the it was easily detected by the the rgb fusion software and you can do all that but again if you look at it like rgb fusion has like one two three four five effects not a whole lot, not a lot more. uh yeah not not a whole lot in there so um and performance is good overall um you can see where it kind of sits in our testing uh pretty much the middle of the road uh, out of the kits that we've tested recently, RGB kits. Um, you know, it, like I said, it's a good overall kit. The biggest thing with this kit that I didn't like is that I could not push it past 3,600 megahertz at all. Um, most kits, we can get at least 200 megahertz without touching uh, voltage or timings. It, like, most kits will just do it. And this isn't, I mean, 3,600 megahertz isn't all that no. uh, high. So I was like, oh, I could easily, you know, but it wouldn't even give me, give me 100 more megahertz, even by pushing the voltage up to 1.45 volts. I mean, uh, it just wouldn't. So this is a kit that you're going to put in your computer. You're going to match it with the motherboard's RGB software, and you're not going to overclock it. Um, and a lot of people are just looking for that. A lot of people don't care about the, you know, the overclocking headroom because they're not going to touch it. Um, and I, overall, I think this, this kit looks good. It's a solid kit. It just doesn't. It doesn't overclock, doesn't have its own software. So again, I gave this a nine out of 10 uh, or an eight out of 10 as well. It's 104 bucks, which puts it in, puts it in line with pretty much all 16 gig kits uh, running at 3,600 megahertz. So, so yeah, pretty cool uh, kit there. That uh, brings us to Case Mod Friday. And this week we have a very cool build. Um, I don't think... We featured this this modder before. This is from Modder W, um, and this is familiar. yeah, this is a Zotac uh, themed build, as you can see by the it's called Zotac Gaming PC. Um, and I just think that this, like how it just looks like like the top of the case was kind of like cut off. And it looks like a futuristic city, like from a movie or something. You know, like you see these yeah. like, future buildings and shapes. That's what it reminded me of when I saw it at first. Yeah, it uh, just it's really cool. Yeah, I like it. It looks really cool. Um, you can see like the whole setup that he that they've done and everything. First, they've got it with cyberpunk, so yeah, it's very futuristic. Yeah, very futuristic looking. Um, we get a close up of the water and some of the things that are like understated that you don't really see is you do have the um, the clear power supply uh, cables. You can buy these. I don't know if they made them, but. Um, how they actually go into the acrylic here? Do they cut each hole? Which is like that takes that's something <laughs> I would I would not do. Yeah. Um, so you can see that you can see that there. 
um, close up of the uh, water block here and the memory. Uh, just really cool stuff, I think. And just, I mean, this is this is gonna look awesome on your desk. It's gonna. Are look they awesome. using that Tai Chi motherboard? One of those showed like the gears. Yes, they're using the Z five ninety Tai Chi. That same board. Uh, yeah. Bottom. Yeah, there you go. This awesome. is the same board that I reviewed, Z five ninety yep. Tai Chi, and uh, this. Uh, what would you call this? The gear? Yeah, the gear. Uh -huh. This gear does move in the motherboard. Right. It's their first one to do it. We've been talking about them doing it for so yeah, long. Um, so it's pretty cool. Pretty cool feature of that board. But overall, like I said, I, I think this is just a really sleek. Here's a front view of it. I mean, how awesome would that be just sitting on your desk? I, I like yeah, it. Yeah, it looks good. Go to yeah. that bottom left one again. This, this one left? Yeah. My other left. left? Yeah. Yeah, your other left. Okay, that so is black, my actual left like <laughs> black fittings with a chrome tubing. It looks like very nice. Yeah, very cool. Okay, I'm more impressed with the case than anything. I don't. There wasn't a whole lot of information on this one as far as like. I don't believe that this is a case that you can buy. Well, it might be, but it was modded heavily. Well, I was gonna say I feel like it is, and they've they've modified something. I don't know. Yeah, what like case the it is, but yeah, me neither. Um, but sleek little desk setup. There you go. You can just take notes from this. Look how clean and nice and uncluttered it is. Yeah, there, yeah. Ryan. that ain't happening anytime it, soon. Yeah, you gotta get on that. Um, uh, here's another picture of that gear, uh, right there. It's just a just a cool one. Um, again, Modder H or or Modder W. Sorry. Uh, we have his uh Facebook links in the article if you want to check it out. But um, yeah, but look at the, like this is like is is good of say I was a great modder this doing this that's a lot nope. of work yeah cut well one cutting all the holes into this uh sure yeah this this water cooling Acrylic, blocker yeah. yeah and then routing everything and make sure and i do yep nope that's not that's not a bob thing at all so so uh, great work uh by modder w definitely uh check it out on the site uh for sure just really cool stuff there and that brings us to news and we have some very interesting stories, I would say. Uh, first, we're already getting leaks for Intel's next gen stuff. It's crazy. Um, it seems so early, but this is early. a it's it's a QS, so that's qualification sample. It's not an E. I don't think this is, this leak is from an ES, which would be an engineering sample. Yeah. Uh, so we're far. It's it's far out. Um, yeah. But the first leaks on the uh, Core i9-12900K have come out, and uh, it says it's going to hit a turbo clock of 5.3 gigahertz. That would be the same as the 11900K. Uh, or wait, right? I yeah, so. I, I'm getting these names missed. As we go up, I always just forget what they are. Um, and all the, there's all these leaks about, yeah, you know, 11900k does go up to 5.3 yeah because so it would be the same um the big change with the uh, with the next generation it's going to be the big little design if you guys aren't familiar with the big little design it's we have big cores and then we have big yeah big little so you have <laughs> big cores and then we have little cores uh bigger cores uh run obviously more power more power hungry the little cores are more efficient and those working together uh provide a more efficient uh we would hope more powerful system and and, and everybody talking about windows 11 windows 11 will take advantage of that design i think uh from what we've heard um cool. but yeah so it, it looks like this will have the same uh speeds as or at least in this sample that has been leaked uh, we'll have the same speeds as the 11900K. A lot of people were saying it would go up to 5.5 gigahertz. Again, this is a QS, not an ES. So, you know, I, I, I yeah, this can all obviously change. Um, but this, this is an interesting part. It's going to have eight big cores and eight small cores. Um, mm. So it's, it's going to be, I mean, you know, we were always used to having the, whatever amount of cores, they're the same, you know, uh, and now this is going to be a big change. And I think it would be, see, it'd be interesting to see how uh, developers and, and game companies take advantage of that type of architecture. I think it's going to be 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that you'll see it necessarily in gaming so much, but definitely other applications that just don't need the full horsepower of a, a CPU to run efficiently or take advantage of even. Yeah, and I think the like, pat, like, like the, go ahead. just kind of like idling or like some basic browser or application use can really take advantage of some of those lower cores. Uh, and if you can address them, like say you are in a game, like put the heavy stuff on the bigger cores. And then if you have maybe an audio uh, like built in chat or something that can run on the lower cores, uh, just fine. Yeah. All sorts of yeah, it, it's, uh, stuff you can do. Mostly, like I said, it's going to be very efficient. I think we'll see power. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully power requirements go down because they've been going up when it comes to CPUs. Um, you know, I think what's the, 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 like the normal desktop, what's the 11900K, the CP, is it 125, 125 watts? And that's if you don't, I mean, it goes a lot higher than that, but but in any case, uh, yeah, power requirements. Yeah, so uh, power requirements will definitely go down. So. First, I was actually surprised when I read the story because I was like, this seems very early to be getting leaks for the next gen Intel, yeah. considering it seems like we just got we just got 11. Yeah. But what's what I think, too, is it is going to be a little bit of a rushed launch because, again, we're going to have DDR5 coming out towards the end of the year and they're going to want to launch with that. Um, so we shall see. Um, Talking about Intel and, and processors, we know we're in a global chip shortage. Um, hopefully that's slowing down on both the CPU and GPU side, but um, there are a lot of places where you just, you can't even get them in like in stores um, and they sell secondhand for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like a lot of people are trying to smuggle CPUs out of China, okay. um, which I didn't necessarily think that was illegal. But I, I, I guess it is. I mean, I guess I mean, if you're smuggling them, there's got to be something not legit. With yeah, them, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, they might be stolen, obviously. Right. Um, but it's like, yeah, I guess. Um, but anyways, uh, Chinese uh, customs officers seized a bunch of processors, i9, 10900Ks, i7, 10700s. Um, and here, here they all are. If you go to the actual... Uh, article from HKEPC. Uh, you can see that yeah. we're like, this looks like, <laughs> like it would normally be uh, narcotics. I mean, this is what right. you would Drugs, see. Rare like animals. In, in, yeah, in, in movies, like that's how this person had the these on them. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't know what type of fine or jail time that this person would receive for yeah. this, but I, I assume those are selling for at least twice the price, the, twice the retail, wherever they're going, right? To make yeah. it worth for this worth person to, mm -hmm. yeah, to do that. Um, but again, yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. Because I mean, you think like, oh, you can get a, you can get CPUs anywhere, but I guess not. Apparently and I not. guess that, I, I don't know if China has specific import export rules for electro like i don't i don't know how we don't know how that works but if oh, somebody's sure doing is. if somebody's doing this uh there has to be some type of rules where you can't just you know like sell it on ebay obviously to another country or something you know what i mean um so that's just pretty crazy story uh one of the few crazy stories we have this week uh the second one uh at least i think that's next on the list uh well this one's actually really good for all of you guys who, I mean, the biggest story that yeah. we've been talking about for the past six months is GPU shortage and how nobody can buy GPUs at retail. Um, it's supposed to be getting better. And I think one of the best things about it is that China did have the crackdown on cryptocurrency. So all of the people who were mining, and I don't know, do you know what they cracked down on specifically? No, I haven't followed the yeah. news on that well in any case china did crack down on cryptocurrency uh mining operations so all of these mining operations big and small have been selling off their hardware and there have been posts on uh, multiple forums of people selling all their hardware and i mean a 3060 was selling for 270 bucks 
Um, That's pretty you can amazing. See, you can see all these cards that are, you know, these, these miners had because they, uh, again, they can't, uh, they're not, it's illegal to mine or I don't, again, I don't know what laws they were breaking in China. Um, but <laughs> I, I saw, and it's kind of funny, like these are, you know, they're getting rid of them. I saw an ad or a, not an ad, but a post about, uh, this, the Asus like Gundam version, I think yeah. of the 3090, like that just awesome looking card being used and available in mining rigs. And you're like, yes. This, that that card is like pretty limited edition, anyways. Very, and the fact it's that one of the like most yeah. ten of them in this mining rig is kind of disheartening. Yeah, it is crazy to see. So you see these big mining operations, and you're like, you you know, this isn't even a big one. I mean, this I mean, this is probably what like fifty cards, uh, sixty yeah, cards. Yeah, it's you know, like that's not a massive mining operation. Some of the ones that I saw, uh, I've seen over the past couple of years are, you know, but still, I mean. For for people in China, I mean, this allows them to buy secondhand cards for an incredibly cheap price. Yeah. You know, um, hopefully, I, again, I don't think we'll see this. We're not going to see those prices here. Yeah, at least not yet. We're not going to see them. I have seen people, a lot of people over the past couple of weeks have, have sent in pictures and you see them on Reddit of let them like getting 30, 60, 70, 80, 90s at retail uh for like a normal price good so yeah so good so uh yeah i mean there's just you know people are selling again yeah people are selling uh this person was selling a lot lots of of laptops that they were using for mining like all this stuff is is just crazy um yeah just wow just just uh the big sell-off well i think we didn't we have the big sell-off like like five or six years ago when like mining what you know, we had, there was off. a, yeah, the big downturn. It wasn't like the, it wasn't, was it the four eighties or is that? I don't, I don't think the four eighty was that popular. I don't know. I remember, I, remember, I just remember there was like the, whatever AMD card, there was so many because like all the miners just got rid of them at like at, mm-hmm. at once. Um, oh, well, if you can get your hands on any of these cards, definitely uh, do it because they're selling at, at good prices. Um, another crazy story this week. Talk, these are all like based crypto, around crypto. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if the I don't know if the the, the uh, CPU smuggling one was right. about crypto, uh, but this one is is very interesting. Um, first time I've seen it. Um, Thirty eight hundred PlayStation Four consoles were set up in a mining operation. Um, and this was, uh, an illegal cryptocurrency mining setup. I don't know what, again, (laughs) illegal versus legal. Yeah. Like what makes these legal or illegal? Uh, Um, yeah, I don't, well, I think on this story I had seen that they were using power illegally. Oh yeah. That's usually what what happens was what this one was. Yeah. You get caught like, Hey, what's, what's the deal with this place (laughs) using all this power all of a sudden? Yeah. Um, but you can see all the, the PlayStation fours here and they were using the PlayStation fours to mine cryptocurrency. I don't, I mean, this looks like a pretty like legit setup too. almost professional, like very professional looking. It's clean. Um, it looks like over stacked against the wall. Like they have all the boxes for them almost. So they could like right sell them when they're done. Yeah. Maybe all the fans, up all the fans and... blowing in air, exhausting air in the place. Yeah. The yeah. sim, you know, managed cables, the racks are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just uh, who would it, I mean like these, I would just like love to like walk in these places just to see even yeah. even like the crazy crypto setups like i would love to like walk into one and just see racks and racks and racks like it's just something cool uh to see you know um yeah so uh in this raid uh this is in the ukraine by the way um 50 processors 500 graphics cards and 3800 playstation 4 consoles <laughs> That is uh, very, very interesting. We have an old man in the chat. Uh, Good to see you here. And he said, yeah, they must have been stealing power. There's no way that would be profitable otherwise. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. I think that was the big China. I think that was the big thing in China was like there's certain parts of China more remote 
that like power was like dirt cheap. And obviously all the miners were taking advantage of that. And then I guess trying to crack down on that. Um, he, this one's in the Ukraine. So probably the same, they like plugged into the place next door. Like, or this is whatever. Just like all these extension cords running across. They're like, hmm, yeah, what's up with yeah, this? Or, yeah, or something. So, uh, very, like I said, very, very interesting to see this. Wonder if, like, so I'm sure these, uh, these, this is in the Ukraine, but imagine like the FBI, they're used to like catching like drugs and, and, you know, uh, yeah, you know, very very bad things and you're you're on this thing you're like oh we gotta these guys are you know you walk into a place and you're used to like going into like a, a drug raid and you go into this place and it's just like four nerds and like racks of blowing and <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like a bunch of red bull or energy drinks just sitting there and you're like yeah what? and like yeah. Grats watching crypto prices right like yeah oh uh, what are you guys doing in here <laughs> yeah i'd be like oh nothing you know, like it's I'm like yeah. expecting guns to be pointed at them or the potential. There's, yeah. yeah, very, uh, very. And like I said, a lot of I think we'll see more of this, too, as uh, one the when, you know, the China's crackdown, we've seen so many really interesting stories. And then all of these, uh, you know, people doing the mining, they're going different places and just like setting up and, sure. you know, we're going to see some more very interesting stories, but uh, back to normal hardware. Uh, the first picture of the EVGA X570 S dark motherboard uh, has been posted online. This one's posted by Kingpin, who is uh, EVGA's uh, resident modder. Uh, and they do a lot of, um, they do a lot of products in collaboration with him. And he posted the back of the board, which does have the dark logo with the Ryzen. What is that? A circle? Is that what you call yeah. that? Sure. A Ryzen circle on the back. Um, and again, we can discern a few things from this picture. Um, one is that the CPU. That's the first thing I noticed. I was like, is, what's yeah. up with that? Is turned sideways. Um, yep. This this is going to make much more room uh, if you're putting. This is an overclocking board, so if you're going to yep. be putting yep. like an LN2 pot on there or whatever, a uh, lot more room for all of that. Um, we can also see that that you know this is going to use single dim, uh, single channel dim slots, which is kind of expected. That's more of an EVGA thing, especially on their overclocking boards. That's how most of them have been. Um, you see that as well. Yeah, it cracks me up it? though that there's like headers on the back for audio. <laughs> like, why even yeah. throw them on there? As part of the chipset. But yeah, no, this is this is exciting. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited so, to see their other boards that aren't necessarily their dark board. Do you think they're going to make more than one? Yeah. You think? I think there's too much of a market for them to keep ignoring. Yeah, I want a piece of that true. that that pie. Yeah. Um, also, as far as power, you're getting. Uh, your normal 24 pin ATX dual eight pin EPS and a six pin PCI express. You can see the six pin uh, down here towards the bottom. Uh, what else? Uh, two PCI express 4.0 X 16 slots and one X one slot, uh, 20 uh, gigabit USB 3.2 gen two by two Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, and a wired ethernet that we can discern. And you have the Wi-Fi antennas there as well. Uh, Going to be a cool board. I really want to see the other side. I always like, uh, EVGA's motherboard designs, especially like their the heat sinks that they use and just the overall look of it. So I'm really interested to see. Obviously, it's going to be matte black and black, right? You don't think they would make it because it's the dark board. With some white on there? I don't think so. <sighs> yeah, I don't think. I think it'll be dark. They'll they'll leave that white logo on the back, but yeah, it'll be a pretty... yeah. Monocolor at least board. this this i mean obviously we saw the teaser from evga but like mm -hmm. this is like yes this is real there's an action i mean it's it's the board's yeah. here so that's that's definitely uh exciting for sure so yeah i'm really hoping they do come out with other boards though because i would definitely consider one for my next build time i've always been a fan of uh, evga mm -hmm. boards yeah. and products in general i think this would bring them to a, a whole different market too and maybe like I mean, when you think EVGA, you really don't think motherboards. You just don't. Yeah, not most and of the time. And I think that, you know, over the past couple of generations of Intel, they've like done one or two boards. Uh, previously, they were doing like at least three. You had the Dark, the For the Win, and you had one other one. 
you had like the micro as well. So they had the micro yeah. ATX. So like, it would be nice to have like a full range from them. And maybe this allows them to do that. Uh, they start with a dark and then go down the uh, product stack from there. That'd be kind of nice. So, yeah. so yeah. What else do we have here? Oh, this is, this is the uh, Ryan's story of the week. Oops. The, uh, well, I have very strong opinions on this too. Uh, we talked about it. Uh, when yeah, a little bit was, today or yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Um, so Corsair has launched a new, uh, this is their Hydro X Series XD7. It's an RGB pump and reservoir distribution plate combo. So yep. this looks like a set of fans, right? But it's not. Basically, what they've done is they made a reservoir slash distro plate that looks like fans. So when you install, say you install this in the front of your system, you still get that cool fan look that you would normally get if you had fans there. Um I get Without that, it. yeah, but I'm just like, I mean, I would rather just have the distro plate there. Yes, and I mean, I get it because they're taking advantage of like, okay, you know, pretty much every case is going to have the three cutouts at the front or whatever for uh, to make it look like, you know, 320 milliliter fans. So I understand that design and look there. Um, and they could go with a, a different looking distro plate that's, more standard. I think this just sets them out and makes them a little unique. I'm not a huge yeah. fan of this product though, because I mean, in the case that they're showing it off in here, like on that image, you've got, uh, uh, can you go back to the other image actually? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they've got a radiator up top, right? Which actually doesn't look like it has any fans on it, which is kind of funny. Um, and then they they have the side fans, um, which look like they're hooked up to a radiator. So, in the, in their build, they're saying, "Oh, this one radiator is going to be enough for your your system." Uh, to me, if you've got enough room, I guess, to have a spare 360 millimeters of radiator or fan space, this might make sense. But most folks, I would think, would want the either just the airflow from having fans there instead, um, or a radiator and fans, depending on what all is is in there. So, I I mean, it's kind of neat, but I'm not a big fan of it. I like it makes sense as you said because most people are gonna have this mm -hmm. available. But I mean, look, I mean, it looks pretty bad. Even if you had the glass panel that goes on top of that, it doesn't look. Yeah, I don't like, think it looks bad, but it it at least with this case and the way they're showing it there, you have like all your cutouts for your fan mounting and everything. If it was a just a rectangular cutout and they somehow figured out a way to attach this or make it look better i think it could um, but it's definitely not like as good looking as the 011 dynamic can with the distro plate there right i think that looks right. much better yeah much better implementation it, it's uh it's interesting i i again i think that one it's very hard to be different in the the water cooling space right mm -hmm. um and i think again this puts you in the corsair ecosystem because these are all iq controlled and you know, it, it gives you that Corsair look that's, you know, good. Um, I just, I don't know. Maybe if I saw it in person, my mind would change, but I would just, on this case, I would rather, you know, they, they like, just like the 11 dynamic that comes with the distro plate or the, the in wind cases that come with the distro plate. Like I would rather buy the case designed with the distro plate in the front rather than put it in. Yep. Right. Yep, that's I agree. just me. Yeah. But um that price, 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 price. Uh let's see if it's on here. Let's uh $249.99. How do you feel about that price? Nope. No thanks. Too high. I'll take a 360 millimeter radiator with fans and a res pump combo for probably the same price. Yeah. And that's I mean, this is what it would look like with the gl tempered glass in front of it. Obviously it doesn't look as bad cause you can't see as much of the outline, but I just, I would rather this whole glass pe like this whole piece of glass be the distro plate, right? Yeah. Rather than the circles, but that's just me. So, so yeah, uh, like I said, good to see something different, but I, I'm just, I'm just compared to a normal distro plate. I'm just not a fan. So, um, okay. get it. 
Now, this is what you need, Ryan. This this next thing is, I think, this is... I know. This is, this is right up your alley here. So, I'm um, just not a fan of these. You're not? No. You wouldn't, like, want to game in this? Like, it's just no. like your gaming rig? No. Let's see it. All right. So, Cooler Master uh, announced or revealed their Orb X, uh, which is a semi-enclosed workstation. I'm trying to... Oh, they actually... Yeah, so this is... It looks like a little pod... Uh, it supports either a 49 inch monitor or three 27 inch monitors uh, in the center here. It has a built in chair, built in like lap desk type of thing. I guess we could scroll through these pictures. Um, you think we're going to see this at CES? Yes, 100%. Um, and I guess the this top part um, will slide up like it's, i don't i guess it's on a motor the the top part here so will slide up so you motor. yeah so you can easily get in and out of their mm. setup pretty cool it would be a, like a nice way to escape like so like i sit in front of this setup all day mm -hmm. and because i work here gaming here just like it, it's not as much of an escape where this would be like a good escape to go gaming if that makes any sense Does yeah that make any sense? i mean it's it i assume would be more immersive right oh yeah there it is with it flipped up yeah to get in and out so especially if you have like a um curved screen right that's pretty wide and kind of takes up a bit more of your peripheral and if you can like maybe recline that seat back and kind of lose yeah. some of some more peripheral yeah i could see it being immersive or more uh you know a way to get away without actually leave in the house or something but man the the space this takes up and like old man says hey if you've got to uh, ask the price you can't afford it type of thing like yeah I'm just this is probably out of my uh, price range how much do you it, think so like obviously it, it doesn't ship with a monitor just the chair and the enclosure what do you think in as far as price like what is your what do you think am i crazy to think like five grand not so i was thinking about that like 35 to seven thousand depending on what it's made out of um yeah and and to be yeah and l right like old man just said is it motorized like does that thing lift up or is it kind of like on some spring assisted uh yeah. shocks or something the, to kind of the chair chairs the look material, nice yeah i don't know if that's leather or leather. what that is but it looks nice and looks like there's you, a ton of rgb lighting around it too yeah and like this all looks like it's metal it's not like yeah. plasticky stuff so i mean it's was pretty that, heavy duty is that old man's guess for the price or is that the actual price is that the old man is that the actual price he says eight eight thousand nine hundred ninety nine ninety eight and then um, like the the opening in the back i'm assuming for your components so yeah i guess you put your there, pc right? back yeah i guess you put your pc back there I never thought about the PC part of it, actually. <laughs> <You> <laughs> so, just yeah. Have, have a beige box sitting next to the same. Yeah. I assume that your PC goes back there yeah. somehow. And, and is this an actual case or is this just a compartment? Like if it's this, like oh, to put kinda, a PC inside of, mm -hmm. it would be cool if that's like an actual, like you put hardware in there. You don't just put a case in there. Like you actually, you know, it, it's, it's cold and it's, you know, motherboard tray in there and all that stuff. So you could, um, well, cause at the yeah. bottom there underneath that, what looks like a panel is a, yep. Right there. Is that intake? Right. Or is that like a cabling opening, know. you know, like kind of a, we'll have to see. Yeah. I want one. I don't know. What these oh, it's okay. Are. So it's gotta be motorized. Look at that. It's got, unless yeah. those are for like speakers or I don't know, like recline. Oh, We'll have to see. I'm Bob sure this needs will be one. at C Yeah, I need one. I'm sure this will be at CES. So uh, we'll have to see here. Let's go through these pictures real quick. It looks cool. I want one. Yeah, definitely. I'm a I fan. See. I would never pay for it. I, mean, I would never pay for it. Mm -hmm. Unless it was like 500 bucks. I'd never pay. And it's never going to be 500 bucks. So um yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, Orbex. I'm sure we'll hear more about it. And oh yeah, this is this is like something for like very wealthy individuals or like land center. That's like what I was different thinking. You see those out at the mall, events. right? 
yeah gaming events where you want to kind of have a cool thing like that's mainly what this is for mm -hmm. and cooler masters has showed these like we they did have one at ces in the past it was made by a different company i'm sure they're probably working with that same company to develop these um yeah yeah it says so this says hidden compartment with built-in sliding tray for pc rig or consoles uh, okay yeah very cool uh, Color Master, you can send me one of those over. Thank you. Uh, and our last story, which I'm actually pretty excited about, um, is about Battlefield 2042. If you're not caught up, uh, that will be the new game coming out. New Battlefield game, uh, slightly in the future, obviously, 2042. Um, a lot of interesting things that we already talked about, but uh, the newest rumor is that the Battlefield hub is coming back. And what the Battlefield hub uh, is doing is uh it's a mode that will allow you to play your favorite maps vehicles and weapons from past games um mm. and it's not meant to be competitive it's just meant to have fun and that's obviously what games should be should be to have fun they shouldn't be yeah. to be, you know and that's what that's like one thing with battlefield games is that's why like i fell in love with them because like the big battles and they were just so much fun whether you won or lost oh, yeah. you had like a lot of fun um so it's gonna be called the battle hub or battlefield hub um and they said uh some of the maps coming to it if you're battlefield if you play battlefield metro locker wake island siege siege of shanghai uh are what is that Ar arica Ar or erica Ar harbor Ar yeah erica harbor and caspian border um obviously siege of shanghai and caspian border of like two of the best maps ever in battlefield See, i like like wake island from i think i played that quite a bit in battlefield 2 um I yeah playing. um so it'd be kind of cool like i think that we i mean look at all the remakes not only games but movies like we are in that nostalgia area oh, yeah. and it's it, it would be great to have those to be able to relive those old experiences um on a, in a new game but kind of reimagined but you get that kind of feeling back i think that's awesome i think that uh yeah i would like i said i think every every game should do this if it's a ser you know a series of games if you can play those epic uh maps or even um storylines or whatever that you could you could do in the game i'm all for it and i think battlefield is the perfect way to do that so uh another reason for for you and i to get the game and play it i think yeah. i would definitely be a, a fan of that for sure so so yeah, so that is it for news this week, guys. Let's move on to what we have coming up next week. Uh, talking about Corsair and being in their ecosystem. Uh, I'll be taking a look at their massive uh, RGB mouse pad. This is their MM700. Uh, works with IQ. Uh, it is RGB. It is a cloth mouse pad. It's pretty big, as you can see. Um, it should take up this entire desk that I have right here, which I'm pretty pumped about. Um, so yeah, yeah, so and it, like I said, it works with IQ, so you can match it with all your components if you are in the Corsair cool. ecosystem. And it's not all, I mean, it's 60 bucks, but I mean, it's a full-size mouse mat as well. So uh, I'll be taking a look at that. And then also I'll be taking a look at the uh, Mushkin, which we haven't heard from in a little bit. Uh, they have Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. I'll be taking a look at their Gamma. Uh, why is their website just not good? <laughs> their gamma uh nvme ssd they sent over the two terabyte version this is based on the Fizon e18 which i have been talking about uh, a little bit and it is uh kind of going to be the all of the non all of the aftermarket or companies that don't have their own controllers uh though most of them yeah. will be using the Fizon e18 so it should be pretty fast uh i'm excited to to check that out as well so that is Kind of what we have coming up uh, next week, and uh, what I need, uh, to move, what? I need to move over to a uh, Gen Four on this system. Yeah, sure. get, get Gen Four in your life, man. I know. I have been so I I've been thinking about this upgrading this the system over here, and I think I I'm ninety percent sure I'm gonna do the fifty nine fifty X. Okay. Uh, I I'm not sure. I have a, an ASUS motherboard. My biggest thing is I want all NVMe storage, right? And I use right. a lot of I use a lot of drives because I use for for video editing and like certain things. Like I I need more than I need more than three NVMe slots. Like that's just me. You think? 
Yeah, hundred percent. Because that's, that's all the storage I'm using. So I need at least more than three. Yeah, but so, okay. So my, I, I believe I have to see. I have like, I have the highest end. Uh, Asus board. Yeah, ROG board that I believe I could be wrong. That does come with the expansion card. If I have that and that, and now I'm just I'm working on the case. I think the case is I think the case will be the O11 dynamic. I just like that. I mean, what like what do you what case do you think I should go for? 3090 is going in there. Uh, mm. For you know, I don't know. You have you, I. The well, the oh, they're not. Yeah, the O11 dynamic would be nice, but only if you water cool it. Um, no, not water, not AIO. Then all don't the then don't go with that case. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, you. I think you've always had Corsair cases since I've mm -hmm. known you. Really, like so. Maybe yeah. stick with something Corsair. One of their new cases. What was it like the seven hundred? Well, the thing is, is we just. So uh, the reason I wanted to go with like a Lee and Lee case is because I do like their uh, their uni fans. I'm a big yes. I'm, I'm a big fan of the uni fan. Um, they're uni fans because one, there's not like a million cables. I'm like, I you know, uh, set, like Corsair is like known for RGB, but there's still a lot of cables that you got to connect and all that. Yep. The uni fan, you don't have all those cables and it just makes it a lot easier. Uh, so I was going to get a bunch of uni fans, put them in the O11 dynamic and uh, you know, do it kind of that way. But I don't know. That's what I've been thinking, but I'm not going to do it till like the end of the year anyways, just because uh, obviously the reason I have to do it is for windows 11. Cause this PC does not support windows 11. Well, officially it'll run it. I mean, there's no, you can't, there's no FTPM on this, you know? Yeah. So can't do it. Um, but I, I do want to upgrade because in all honesty, I love the 680X, but as far as cooling goes, especially with this 3090, it is not like I have to have the side panel open right now, uh, like cracked open. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. So I don't know. We have to find a case. We have to find There's, me a good case. Maybe, the a, thing is, uh, maybe a nice Fantex case. Uh, we haven't seen anything new from them in a while. It feels like or nothing yeah. I've been super excited about, I should say. I do have a case here that I can't tell you about. That's pretty cool. That would be very good on cooling. Just say that it's, it's nice. Okay. Maybe that would be the route. Actually, that could be the route. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, we'll see, but I need something that's going to look nice sitting here in the backdrop of videos. Yeah, I mean, that's well, definitely so. why you can go with a, like an in-win of some sort. Um, yeah, definitely. Look well, nice. We'll see, but that's that's what's going. That's what's been going on in my head lately. I haven't. Uh, we talked about the what was it the Tomorrow War last week. Uh, if you haven't seen that yeah. on uh, Amazon Prime, check that out. Beyond that, tech wise, I I did get the rooms. I finally so I finally got a C stand, uh, which you can see the legs of. Maybe if I zoom out, you guys can see. Uh, no, zoom in. You can kind of see the C stand. Uh, behind me you can see the legs of it and then i have i i did get the this new light a while ago and it's nice because it's yeah you know, i can just turn it on and off you can kind of see it going on and off there um but it's a really good video light so the next video that you'll see on the youtube that's not a podcast will look really good so i was excited to get that stuff um but beyond that i think that's i don't know i think that's all tech related. Yeah, that sand was nice i need i need something similar i don't need a c-stand uh, like that i need like one of the elgato arms yeah is is what would work best for me as far as spacing goes and attachment and floor space so yeah 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 we were talking those. before the podcast like i have a lot of floor space so that well i needed the c-stand because this light i have a big dome on it and mm -hmm. one it's too heavy for like you can see the other light like, stand tip on, over uh, on this yeah like this light stand over here would tip yeah. over pretty much uh, so I needed that, but it, the C stand gives you the arm so you can kind of put it up over you, which is nice. So I just uh, went to Elgato's site to look at those arms and they have an event on July 15th. That's tomorrow. What's the event? I don't know. It says Elgato event. 
uh, July 15th, 2021 at 1900 GMT. Is, would this be like a new product? I don't know. I like literally just came across this. So maybe. Does this go to a, uh, okay. Elgato, Elgato event, create better. That's what, uh, well, here, I'll go back here. Oh, and then there's so, a video. So yeah, I'll fit. Yeah. So if you go to the their website and then go to tune in, yep. uh, and then it says okay, Elgato YouTube. event, create better. Uh, premieres in 17 hours. So, well, now this is something to talk about. So, what do you, what do you think? It's create better. So, do you think we're going to get some new stream oh, deck? Like, can we're you play that get... video? Let's see, like, oh. or skip through it at least, and we'll see what. Uh... Okay. Okay. What's that? Oh, that's a. Oh. oh, it's a case. But there's there's like ball and shapes. Okay, the shapes. Okay, that's a ring. Like, I see a light. I see. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's the thing that we've been looking for is the mobile streaming deal. Or, or a webcam, a camera. Um, I don't know. Who knows? But I'm glad That's, I saw it. Yeah, interesting uh, news. So we'll definitely uh, check the site uh, because we'll definitely have yeah. you know info about whatever they are launching. Um, yeah, it's interesting. What? Uh, anything else you've been working on or tech-related stuff? Nothing. Uh, no, I got in uh, the desk components for a sit stand desk. The desktop uh, finally came in last week. Uh, so I got uh, the legs uh, unboxed. And man, I, I forget. They're heavy. I, had a, I, had, I got them and I set them in one spot. And kind of was like, well, I know the desk, the, the tabletop isn't going to be here for a while. So I'll leave these here. And then I went to pick them up again. I was like, oh, <laughs> I forgot how heavy yeah. this was. Yeah. So. No, that'll be exciting. Yeah. That'll be imagine, cool. imagine having, how many did I have at one time? One, like three. Two. I think I had, yeah, I had three standing desks at one time. Imagine moving those all. Mm -hmm. to, well, one having to take them apart and then having to move them. Uh, to well, multiple. and keep all your screws and legs and everything organized to go. This with, this desk left? right here is like there's two screws that are just completely gone, and uh -oh. it's like it's it's not that it's on its last leg the the uh the feet are fine this i want to get i don't know i want to get like a different type of tabletop because you can put any tabletop on these legs you know what yeah. i mean um i don't i so have you seen those like resin tabletop oh yeah where things? they're cut out and then they pour yeah yeah, yeah. let me see if You're i can do something like that no because i can't afford it um because they're like five thousand dollars let me see if I can find one. Just gotta find some wood and get no, mix up I some can't. resin and you're Let gonna go. You're talking about wanting to do a van life van. How are you gonna well, yeah. do that without a so like okay, here we go. I bring this up so you guys can see. So something cool like that. Um, but like if you look at the size, like this isn't even as like I need a big tabletop, and the this one is so it's three hundred bucks. Oh, and this Never is mind. 36 by 48. I need 36 by 72, I think. Something like that. Let me see. This is the cool one. This is the one that I really want. Like, like look how beach. cool that is. Wow. Like, that that's is amazing. Cool. Uh, this is only 25 by 15. So, so it's like a little ledge in table. Yeah, thing. it's yeah. like, it's very small. That's, that's cool. like, that would be like the end goal, right? But that's just not in the budget. I think some of like the, for the size I want and like something like this, it's like $5,000. And, and as much as I would love that, that's just a, too much money to spend oh, yeah. on a desk. Uh, when I already have a tabletop that works fine, but mm -hmm. that like this tabletop works great. Uh, I was looking at like the, you ever, you ever heard of like the living edge ones that are basically like, cut out of a tree Yeah, I'm looking at something different, but this is like, computer first. Then maybe we'll upgrade some other stuff. And we do have, I do uh, have an office update video coming now that I have everything cool. set up the way I want it. So that's coming there as well. Uh, old man in the chat said he swapped out two four terabyte uh, WD red drive for two air eight ter eight terabyte Seagate drives in my case. Uh, the WD reds are five years old. Yeah, I've had two WD reds die on me uh, in my NAS over the past couple years so i've never used 
a Seagate. I haven't used a Seagate drive in probably 10 years. Wow. I think I had, uh, I feel like I had some just recently or, well, I say recently within the last five years, but I don't remember what they were now. Yeah. The, uh, but- Oh, well, that's what I was going to ask you is uh, just regarding the motherboard and everything. And you want to use, you know, NVMe, like how much, how much storage are you going to put in this thing? Um, Cause if you filled it up with two terabyte gen four drives, that's only six terabytes, bro. It's not, it's not as much. Um, this, the, this, I would be fine with one terabyte. I mean, it, it, it it's the di- I need different drives for different things specifically, especially when it comes to scratch disk and video editing and all that stuff. It's just like I want stuff on separate drives. It's just, if that okay. makes any sense. Sure. Um, and I just like the idea of having multiple drives for multiple things. I know I could like obviously with like the new NVMe SSDs, you're getting like seven thousand megabytes yeah, a second. Like, like I can what, obviously what are you gonna be bottlenecked. Like I could obviously partition that into like two drives you know, or whatever. Still be just fine. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I'm just, this is just, no, I mean, I do the same thing. Like I have my OS drive and two game drives, but my two game drives are just three and a half inch SATA SSDs. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but the upgrade will happen and we'll probably do a video on it. So, uh, stay tuned for that, that, all that stuff, more videos coming. Like I said, I finally got the office set up to shoot video. It's only taken me. I've been here since what? Middle of April. So (laughs) it's only taken me. Yeah, uh, long enough. So we'll, that that stuff will be coming. Um, but yeah, we're, are we gaming? Are we gaming tonight? Sure. You said I don't know how late I'm. I uh, yeah, I'm exhausted. I probably look like I'm about to fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm up for it. Though. Head on over to twitch.tv forward slash think computers. We will be jumping on there after this. Uh, thanks everybody for hanging out, old man. Thanks for hanging out. You're here pretty much every week. Uh, but thanks everybody for listening, and we'll see everybody.